you probably know me is at, at CDEF, the uh, Pixelscamp uh, webpage guy, the guy you uh, nag every time you find something wrong with it. Uh, please don't, not, not right now. Um, so I'm going to introduce you um, like a trend that, that's happening on uh, web page development, uh, which is called Gemstack. And I will explain that in a minute. But first, I would like to know uh, if you already uh, know some of these technologies. Have you worked for, with something like uh, websites, uh, static website generators like Jekyll or no? Uh, has, any, has anyone used the GitHub pages? Okay, do you use it? Okay, okay, cool. So uh, this presentation is going to be more focused on Jekyll uh, and then um, other things that you can use to deploy your website. Uh, but first of all, I'll inter briefly introduce to you the, uh, the Gemstack uh, concept. So as you can see, the Gem stands for JavaScript APIs and markup. Uh, so this is kind of a, a concept uh, that uh, is the opposite of having a, a, a dynamic uh, server. Uh, everything is um, built and uh, burned to static pages. I'm going to use the, the term burned a lot <laughs> because I'm used to it. So um, everything is uh, generated on static files. So. Uh, the, 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 content, uh, the, the, the content is actually stored on files and then the, the, the site is generated directly to HTML pages that uh, are uh, generated and then uploaded to a repository. So what are the, uh, this is, you can find more information about this uh, on gemsite.org if you want to know more about it. But here are some examples of what is and what isn't the Gemstack. So, Server-side pages like uh, WordPress websites that use a, a database that are constantly uh, fetching content from the database and then uh, serving the page to you is not a, a, a Gemstack website. Um, Gemstack websites usually uh, generate all the files and everything is directly served from a, a static web file. Okay. So why, why is this? So you have better performance. There is no need for a database. Everything is served directly. Um, everything can be hosted directly on uh, a repository and uh, you can uh, take advantage of GitHub pages that does this for you and you can even host your website for free. <laughs> uh, a lot of people are doing this. Um, and then, you can build the, the, the website the way you want and not be uh, somewha somehow uh, um, have to, having to follow some strict uh, uh, templating language uh, like, uh, like uh, um, WordPress does. Uh, at least for me, I find it uh, <laughs> more difficult to uh, uh, do anything I, I want uh, with the WordPress. So. I try to avoid it. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to talk about uh, why do we choose this approach? Uh, for instance, at Bright Pixel, we try to think uh, first who is going to maintain these projects uh, when we are uh, creating a new project, and which technologies are we going to use? So the first first thing that comes into mind is who is going to maintain it? At least for me, I think uh, is who is going to edit the actual content on the page. Uh, if it's a, a, a service like an e-commerce website, a, a big website, okay, you can use React because the team is going to be uh, a, a, probably a large team and it's going to be a big project. And the idea of having everything with components and everything it uh, uh, sounds good for, for, for maintenance, from a, a maintenance uh, point of view. But if you're going to build like a corporate website uh, and you already know that 
who is going to maintain it are people who don't really are, aren't really developers and uh, probably uh, don't want to mess with HTML or anything. Uh, but you want to create the, the website the way you want. So I try to uh, tell mostly the younger developers who want to build everything with React. <laughs> As it, okay, now uh, we are go probably going to be uh, um, with a lot of stress with other, with other projects. So we're going to use something that uh, a guy from marketing can edit those pages because he's more, for, more familiar with HTML, with basic HTML. So we tend to use uh, Jekyll uh, for some of our websites because it's uh, something that we're more familiar with. Um, so I'm going to show you. Uh, uh, Jekyll is a static website generator. Uh, it's been around for, for some, quite some time now. Uh, and I think the, the, the most, uh, um, the, the good thing about Jekyll is that GitHub integrates uh, Jekyll natively. So if you uh, create a, a repository on, uh, on GitHub with a, with a Jekyll project, you can deploy it directly to uh, GitHub pages uh, without having to do anything. They, they'll just build the, the, the website for you, okay? So I'm going to show you uh, how, the, how Jekyll works and how the, the file structure on Jekyll uh, is organized, okay? So you, you can install Jekyll, okay, like this. You can follow the instructions. And then you get a, a, a file structure that is similar to this. I don't know, is everyone, can, can everyone see? Do I need to bump up the text? Okay, better? Okay. So, uh, this is the basic uh, file structure of, of Jekyll. Uh, you have your includes uh, that you you can use to uh, break the, the several components of your web page uh, uh, apart. So you have the, your header, your footer, your probably the, the JavaScript includes. Um, okay, so the head part with all the open graph, uh, meta tags and everything, CSS, okay. Then uh, footer, like this. So the, the, the includes are what the, the parts of the website you're going to repeat along your templates. Then you have the layouts. I already have one on this example, but I'll show you a more complex uh, Jekyll website in a minute. So layouts are f the, the, the templates. The templates you are going to use for different kinds of pages. You can use just one template for all uh, the, the website pages, but you can have more than one layout for instance, for the home page or uh, internal pages, and then you can have the um, the post layout that that's going to be different, or a specific layout for any kind of type of page or you you want. Um, Jekyll has a, a SAS support built in, so you can have your SAS uh, files uh, here on this directory. Uh, and it all it, it compiles the, 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 the SAS for you, so it's built in. So no need to use uh, uh, comp CSS compilers or, or anything. Um, then this is the the static uh, the static website that is going to be generated. So we'll, we'll just ignore this for now. Um, and then you can store your files. Your, uh, any page, uh, any folder you create outside of these underscore um, directories are the, the, the directories that are going to be moved on to the, the static uh, web page that is going to be generated. So if you create a folder, you are already creating a route. So no need for a, a router. Uh, you, just create, you, you just create a folder and then you, you create an index file inside and you have your, your, your route on your, on your website. Um, the collections 
are the kinds of objects that you're going to use on your website. So you can use collections for storing data. Um, and you can have like, uh, like people, posts, pages, uh, organizations. Those typical kind of objects that you are going to repeat along your uh, website, like your clients list or whatever. You can store those in your collections. And this is where the actual uh, magic happens. Instead of having a, a database, you store all your information on separate files. And then Jekyll is going to make those objects available to your templates. Uh, so instead of having to set up a, a database and having to make queries, you're just going to create your own collections and then uh, create a file for e each entity that you, that, that you want. And then it's going to have uh, like a data structure here. These are the properties and the values. Okay. Then you can have, uh, there is another folder uh, that I don't have here, that it's called uh, data. I can create one now. Okay, it's called data. So the data, the data folder uh, also exposes uh, data files to the templates. And you can have data files in, like, I think, three kinds of, uh, of formats. You can have JSON files, you can have uh, CSV files, and YAML. Um, so if I create something like this, I'm going to create something like, uh, okay, and I'm going to create And then what is going to happen is that this uh, array is going to be available on the website for the templates in site.data. something. Uh, and it's, if you can see, the, uh, it's generating already. So it made it available for the templates. So now I'm going to show you uh, a bit of how the templating works. Uh, I already have some data here uh, uh, for this presentation. So I'm going to show you what I have on my collections. And for instance, the site navigation is a good example because it's simple. It's a simple object to iterate. And I have here the, the, the footer links, okay? So I have items, then title and URL. And I can show you an example. Uh, if I go to my includes and then go to the footer, what happens is this, okay? So maybe like this. So site navigation where slug is footer. Then for item in menu items, if item on page. So you verify if the, 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 it's, a, it's a page or it's a, a, a URL. And then you just build the HTML around it. So no GSX, no, <laughs> no, uh, no state, no classes, no, no, no everything. You just write a, a data structure and then it's readily available to use inside your, your templates. This, the templates use the liquid uh, uh, syntax. You can look it up. It's a, a widely used uh, uh, template uh, syntax. Um, I'm only, um, uh, known, made popular by Shopify. Um, so how is this, how does this work? So I already have my, my, my collections, I already have my, my templates. So how does this look? I have some CSS, some structures here. So like I show you the header, the head, the header. Same thing for the, the header navigation, okay. HTML, and then uh, for some types of uh, some types of objects like the the clients collection, uh, I made a list, and it iterates through the 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 client collection. Okay, 
So you build your own card with lists and everything. So how does this look? Okay, this is the, the, the website that is now running on, on Jekyll, okay? Uh, it's generated now with the, with the HTML and CSS that I've prepared. Um, I'm going to change something in my, in my collections. Uh, so I'm gonna go for the footer navigation and I'm going to add some other link. So there you go, pixel scan. And I'm going to remove it again, just for you to see. And it already removed, okay. So uh, when you're running uh, Jekyll on, uh, on, on your uh, local host, uh, it has the, uh, the, the live reload uh, also uh, running. So every change you make, it's, uh, it's updated. So I think you, you, you now get the, the, the gist of it. Uh, if you publish this to your repository, any change you make to, to, the, to the Jekyll files will be uh, published to uh, the GitHub pages. Uh, for that to happen, you just have to go to your uh, repository settings and then activate the GitHub, the GitHub pages. You can choose which branch uh, you have on, uh, uh, is running the, the Jekyll project. You can have custom domain, so you can use your own domain point your DNS to, uh, to, to GitHub, and they'll even generate the, 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 the SSL certificate for you, so you'll have HTTP, HTTPS on your, or on your site uh, for free. So you don't have to do anything. You have uh, the, the builds, you, you, you have the hosting, and you have HTTPS uh, without having to do really anything. Um, so, okay, so I'm a developer, I made, my, uh, my templates because uh, I know HTML and CSS and whatever, uh, maybe throw in some, some JavaScript, uh, and I made uh, something that looks like uh, what I want to build, but how am I going to uh, give this to other people to edit the, 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 the content? Um, so, I told you that this updates directly, so I'm going to make the, the if I go to the, the, the GitHub page uh, that GitHub provides for me, this can be your own URL, you just have to set it up. So you, if can, you can see I don't have the, uh, the, the new footer link here, but I'm going to add it again, then I'm going to, you can see the, the div here, and yet the, okay, I'm going to publish this, I'm going to commit this to, to, and push this to GitHub. Slow internet is slow. So, now GitHub uh, will detect an update, a, a push on, a, on the, the repository, and it's going to rebuild the, the website. It can take a bit because it's going to relaunch the, 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 the Jekyll uh, and have, it's going to uh, all generate all this, the, the, the static pages, and it can take a while. So if we wait a little bit, we'll see the, uh, the, the footer added there. So to edit this content, like I was saying, how do we give this to other people to edit uh, the, the website that we just created? So, um, if we are using a, a repository and we can publish the, the, the pages on GitHub and GitHub makes it available, some guys had the idea, if you edit files and it, everything gets regenerated, some guys had the idea, so why don't we build uh, a tool that has access to the repository and edits the, the file for, uh, for us? So there were a lot of solutions that, uh, uh, 
that were, were made around this, uh, and I'm going to show you one of them, is called Netlify CMS. So those guys had the, that idea uh, to build a CMS that interacts with these kind of uh, static we uh, website generators that you give them access to the, your repository and they will, the, uh, the, you have to configure where you have your collections, how your collections are uh, structured, and then it will be able to edit the collection files uh, and push them directly to your repository so, and the website gets regenerated again. So I'm going to show you how that works. Uh, Netlify CMS is one of, I think, the most popular. Um, they, uh, this is uh, free to use. Uh, and you can look at the, the documentation for all the options that, that you have. You have a, a simple uh, CMS uh, look and some previews. And how does this integrate with Jekyll, for instance? So the only thing that you have to, to do to turn your static website into a CMS-powered website is this. You have to create an admin page, create an, e an index HTML file, and then include a script tag from Netlify. <laughs> and then you can create a, a configuration file with all your backend, uh, um, with all your collection uh, data structure, uh, and it's going to generate a, a back office for you to edit your, your, your website. I'm going to show you now. So all these kinds of uh, fields that you have is, uh, is, it's, is the ones that you have uh, on, your, uh, on your collections. For example, on, on organizations, I have a title, URL, industry, and type. So in my back, uh, back office configuration, if, uh, if I go to uh, organizations, Okay, client organizations, carousels, people, organizations. So I have the title, logo, URL, industry, and type. I choose which kind of field that I want, and the back office will be, interface will just be generated around this. I'm going to show you now. So I already have this open here. So, organizations, uh, this interface is built just around that configuration file. Everything that you specify there, all the fields, are going to be used to generate the, 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 the form structure that you specify. So, everything is in those collection files are loaded and then the, the, the forms are uh, filled with the information that you have on your collection files. Again, we're not using any database at all for this. So I'm going to edit something. Uh, hopefully, okay, so I, I pushed, uh, you remember uh, a little bit ago, I pushed the, the, uh, the new uh, footer link to, to the, the repository, and then the, um, the Netlify CMS application uh, went to the, the repository and fetched the, the new uh, uh, collection files, and it's already updated. So I can edit this again if I want. I can delete it from here and then publish it. So what C uh, Netlify CMS is actually doing right now is making a new commit and a new push to the repository, <laughs> and then uh, either GitHub or Netlify itself are, are going to rebuild the website and then publish it again. Okay, so again, I'm going to show you here some, uh, some changes I can, I, and I can make. So this is the typical uh, corporate uh, website. You have some about information, some news, some kind of numbers you can, you can animate and everything. The client list and your footer links. Uh, so I'm going to edit uh, maybe, I don't know, the organizations, okay? So I'm gonna add a new organization and it's going to call, be called uh, Taikai, for example, okay. okay? Okay. 
you have you also have media management uh, included because when you uh, configure your CMS file, you can specify which folder you want uh, on your repository the media files uh, to be uploaded to. Um, they also integrate. They, they also have support for third-party uh, media managers. Uh, uh, if you want, uh, it, you just have to go to the, the the Netlify and see which ones are integrated. So, but I'm going to choose uh, something just for fun. Uh, I'm going to choose this. I could upload you a new one, okay? And then URL. So HTTPS. Okay, so, and this is a company. Okay. Clients. Okay. Type client. Publish. Okay. So, hopefully, when this is redeployed, and you can see now, if I go to, if I go, uh, if I go back to my local host, and then refresh here the uh, the GitHub. Uh, you could see I have I had some uh, some uh, files that I some commits to pull back from the repository because I made those changes online. It pushed directly to the repository. So if I'm running my repository uh, in uh, in my local environment, I'm going to have to pull the, the the new things that got updated in the meantime. Okay, and then. You can do all sorts of stuff with this. You can have previews. You can have uh, relation type fields because it, it can actually uh, make relations within collections. Um, you can specify, for example, uh, when I when I'm uh, choosing people uh, for some some kind of uh, section, you can specify uh, different kinds of people like. If you, you, if you have typically uh, different parts of your organization, some are the advisor board, some are uh, the, the marketing team or whatever, uh, you can, could create those categories and then specify a, a, a relation type field. Uh, I'm going to show you here. Um, okay, for example, the this is the footer, and these are the pages. Okay, for example, uh, the, my pages on my templates are created with sections, uh, and I, I have a, a, a relation type field here that relates the, uh, the the section that I want to use on my on my uh, homepage with the sections collection because I could have different uh, uh, I, I could repeat all blocks in different pages that I want to create. So. This is actually going to, to load all, the, all those collections and you have, have a, a relation type uh, field. It's going to fetch that information and it's going to show those options on, on, on that relation field that, that, that you can use to uh, uh, build relations between collections. Uh, I'm going to show you a more complex uh, website in a minute, uh, but this is, I think this is very powerful <laughs> for such a, a, a simple uh, idea. Um, and then you can manage, uh, of course, this is not as flexible as something like a web a site builder that you typically find on WordPress that you can build all the, the, the aspects of your sections and everything. But I think that approach is also too flexible. And sometimes when you build a website, you end up having your client uh, messing too much uh, around it and sometimes Everything is fucked up. Um, okay, so I'm going to show you something that we built on this. Uh, again, because of uh, who who was going to maintain the, the website, we built uh, we built uh, Sun IEM's corporate uh, website. So this is a, a, a corporate website with a lot of information. Um, I'm going to load this again and then. You have all the sections that you typically find uh, in, a, in a website like this, okay? You have companies with all the company logos. You have news. You have other pages uh, with also different kinds of, uh, of sections and everything. 
and none of this is actually hard coded into the template. It's uh, everything, it's on its own collection, okay? For instance, the team, like I was saying, uh, you, you have a collection of people uh, with different categories. Some are part of the investment team, some are part of the advisory board, okay? Then you ha also have uh, posts because uh, Jekyll uh, already provides you um, uh, the, the posts collection. Uh, and you can, you can use it to um, uh, generate a page for each post. It, it will build the slug and everything. It uh, you can specify in which way the, 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 the slug, the, the post slugs are generated in your config file. So if I go to the Jekyll uh, config file, okay, I can specify which of my collection uh, types are going to be burnt into uh, static pages. So these which have the output as false uh, will, uh, will be available for the templates and those which have the output true are going to have their own slug for each item on the collection. So if I look into inside the, the, the generated uh, page, I can see that there is here some news with the slug <laughs> which are actually actual folders, okay? So for the Sona IEM website, we uh, also built the, the, the post they already had. They, we imported the, the, the news from the, pre the previous uh, website. So you have, um, you have posts, you have pagination and everything, okay? You have category pages. It only depends on how you structure your templates and how you structure your, uh, your collection files and the generate the, uh, the, um, uh, the templates uh, you want. Okay, I'm going to show you um, the Sonim back office, which is, uh, we has a more complex uh, configuration. Uh, so, for instance, uh, this page here, uh, the contacts for, you, you, you would think, okay, this is just a, a, a Google Maps uh, uh, file with the, the pin uh, hard-coded onto the template, but no. <laughs> uh, we actually did this, uh, so. Oh, it's on sections, so contacts, and then we have one contact which is Sun I am, the address, and the latitude and longitude here. And this is actually used to uh, build the, um, the, the, the map with the actual location uh, on it. So when the JavaScript then uh, fires up, it's going to read the, the latitude and, and the longitude from some attribute on the HTML and then create a marker for, for that. So you can think with, uh, a lot of possibilities uh, with this. It just has to be created on how you organize uh, things. Uh, and you can use this to do all the, the, the standard stuff you find on, uh, on the website, the contacts, the social media uh, links. Uh, you can also do stuff like uh, creating the, the, the placeholders for the, the Google Analytics tags and everything. So you will just have to include that on the, the footer uh, or the, the JavaScript section of the, 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 the templates. Okay, so uh, now if this is run by, I'm going to talk about uh, collaboration now. Uh, so if this is, uh, if this is running on your uh, GitHub account, uh, how are you going to bring people, uh, outside people, to manage the, the, the website? How uh, do those people will have access to uh, make actual commits and push this to the repository? So uh, I think that is the, where these kinds of, of uh, services that are available uh, kind of leverage the, their uh, business plan on. Uh, because you 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 have to interact with uh, GitHub uh, uh, in some some way, uh, but Netlify, for example, uh, provides you a way to um, accept invite uh, invite people 
uh, outside people to make commits uh, in your name. So they will, they will allow you to invite uh, five people uh, for uh, collaborating on the, the, the back, uh, on the back office. So for, I think, uh, for most, uh, most kind of, most sites like this, it's uh, more than enough. Uh, and uh, everyone, know that, everyone knows that uh, sharing uh, credentials is a uh, best practice. Our own government does it, so I think it's a, a good practice. <laughs> so um, I think it uh, uh, will be, for these types of websites, more than enough. Uh, there are other competitors that will allow you to do this uh, depending on how uh, you have your repository. Some, uh, I will go that into that in a minute. So I'm going to show you how the, the Netlify service, not Netlify CMS, uh, uh, handles this. So I'm going to show you the configuration, the Netlify configuration for uh, for the the, the, web, the the website that I was I was showing. Okay. So you have uh, deploys. You can actually see the, the, the deploy log. I, if something goes wrong, you, you'll see. You'll get, you'll get notified about it because you have a lot of stuff that you can configure for, for this. Okay. So here is, is uh, how you specify the build settings. You, you can have build hooks. You can do post processing uh, on the service. Uh, you, like for example, you don't have to create the uh, the grant files or the, the gold files or whatever. Uh, Netlify already does this for you. If you host your website with them instead of GitHub Pages, uh, it will detect where are the the, 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 the scripts being included and it will minify the the, <laughs> the 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 scripts for you. So you don't have to worry about uh, build build scripts or whatever. Um, you have, you'll have notifications uh, uh, for the deploys. And then you have the identity service. The identity service is uh, what I was talking about. You can invite uh, external users to, uh, uh, to edit the, the, the CMS uh, and do commits on your name. How does this work? Net, you will auth authorize uh, Netlify uh, on GitHub uh, and you will authorize the, the, the uh, Netlify to use GitHub for you. Uh, and it uh, ac actually has a, a, to a token. Uh, it will generate a token that it's going to use. OK. It, it generates a token to use uh, with your uh, GitHub access. So the external users uh, will be doing commits on your, on your behalf. That's it. Um, so what's more to, to, to know about this? Uh, there are uh, a lot of uh, other features uh, that you can try. Uh, some, of them, some of them are free. Uh, they will allow you to run forms, for example, which is a, a problem in, the, uh, in these kinds of static uh, web pages. Uh, but they will allow you to, to, to do this. Um, and then uh, you can unlock more features if you want. If you, if, you, uh, if you need a lot of people editing the website, then you, you have all those different tiers uh, of uh, pricing that, that they have that will allow you to, to do more stuff. Uh, one thing that I'm forgetting about is that, okay, if you have like, a, um, if you use this to build some kind of editorial page, that everything must run through um, uh, an approval process. Uh, they, they also thought of that. And then on your configuration file, uh, you can specify uh, the publish mode, which is the editorial workflow. What this does is, instead of publishing directly the changes, you can have intermediate states for those changes. And you can have, uh, like, for example, this is a draft, this uh, it needs approval, uh, and then someone will go there and, and uh, say that this is approved, uh, and then it actually, it only gets published then. 
So what's happening behind this? If we think about uh, this, all of this being run on, on GitHub, what it's actually doing behind it, it's creating a pull, re uh, it's creating a pull request for those changes. <laughs> so I think, <laughs> I think the idea was, uh, was amazing. So you create, you create something, you edit the content, and you say, this is a, a draft or it's, it needs approval. So it automatically creates a pull, a pull request with, uh, with those changes and it, re it, uh, it will show you on the interface uh, where are the, the stuff that will need approval. And then something will, uh, someone will go there and look through those changes and then accept them and publish them. And then it closes the pull request on the, on, on, on the repository. It's like, just like that. Okay, so um, what are the alt alternatives for uh, uh, Jekyll and, um, and Netlify? Um, you can go to uh, staticgen.com uh, to look through alternatives. These are the, probably the, the most popular right now. Um, one of them is Yugo, which is uh, based on Go. Uh, they, say, uh, they say it's a, a faster uh, static site generation. It, uh, also, it also integrates with, uh, with Netlify. Um, Gatsby, uh, uh, for those who are more familiar now with uh, templating in uh, React, but it, all the stuff gets uh, generated uh, statically as well. And there are other, you can, you can, uh, you can look. Um, for example, if you go to the Gemstack website, they have here examples and they will show you how these websites were built and how the recipe for creating the, 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 these websites uh, was, uh, how they choose the, the different components to, to build this, uh, these websites. So some of them use Jekyll, some of them uh, use Middleman, some of them uh, use um, uh, Hugo. So just pick your uh, static website generation, pick your, your tools and just deploy the, the, the website, okay? So, for example, like I said, you have Yugo. Uh, this is built on Go. It's, it's supposedly faster. I haven't had any uh, uh, time to, to, to play with this. Uh, everyone who loves uh, React is constantly talking to me to, about Gatsby. <laughs> Again, I didn't have time to, to, to test it. Uh, this is uh, also a new one. Th this is actually uh, interesting because it's JavaScript, but it's a static website genera generated that allows you to have the templates uh, written in all sorts of uh, languages that you can be familiar with. So you don't have to know a specific templating language. You can choose your own and we'll, it will work with it. And you can, like they say, you can use them all together in a single project. So if you're familiar with Jekyll, you use uh, uh, Liquid, you can use uh, Liquid. If you're familiar with Mustache, you can have Mustache, whatever. Handlebars, okay. So what are the other services that are doing this right now? Uh, forestry is one of them. Uh, uh, Jekyll, uh, uh, Jekyll also um, announces or uh, sponsors, uh, it's being sponsored by, by Forestry, okay? Uh, this is uh, kind of the same approach uh, of Netlify, but instead of having just one configuration file for the whole back, the, the whole back office, uh, you have separate configuration files for each uh, collection. Uh, I think the interface is a little bit more modern and they also have a, a visual uh, a collection uh, builder. So you can say, I want this field, type of field here, this type of field there, and then just build it. Um, again, the pricing and the limitations are also the, o o always the, the same stuff. For here, the free one, you, you get three guests per, per, per site. When you start paying, you can have more, uh, give access to more, uh, to more people. For example, SiteLeaf, um, it's another one. They say, uh, I think it doesn't have the same limitations, but the repository must be public. So, it's, so I think it, you can have 
unlimited collaborators just as long as the, 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 the repository is uh, public. Uh, okay, so you can look all through all these solutions. Uh, so I think the, the, the main resources to look for solutions like this would be uh, jamstack.org and staticgen.com. Uh, so you can read more about this. Um, so I think that's it. Uh, do you have any questions? Did you like what you saw? <laughs> and you can ask me anything right now. Okay, thank you. Okay. Oh, I forgot, just one thing. Don't go, don't go. <laughs> one more thing. Yeah, yes, one more thing. How, how did I forget about this? So, so this is the, 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 the bonus thing, the bonus part. You can see this here, okay. This is static, right? But I have search, okay. Or, how is this possible? So, if I have access, how is this possible? If I have access to all the collection files, why not? Uh, build a search index. So, okay, I have also access to all the, 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 the collection files, the posts and pages. Uh, I have access to uh, a, a, a part of the, of the object uh, that is the, the full render template. So what I just do is pick up the, the, the page output, strip the HTML, HTML and everything, and just build Something like this. Uh, okay. Then you have <laughs> the search index, which is actually uh, 40K, <laughs> and just uh, do the search on front end. That's it. And you have uh, a full static website with uh, search uh, and everything. Uh, and you can also, and you can do another thing uh, that can be interesting, which have, which is, if you want to expose the, the collection objects to be consumed for other people for other purposes, like building applications or anything, why not building a, an API as well? So what you have to do is just create the, your end API endpoint, Right? And then JSONify the object, and you'll get something uh, like this. Okay? Yay! And I have a post API, organizations, and of course, this doesn't, doesn't accept posts. It, it, it won't, you won't be able to add, but you can use this to uh, provide the same information to be consumed, for example, for on, a, on an app. All this is static. Now I'm finished. <laughs> uh, hi, thanks for the talk. Uh, I was wondering if you didn't want to upload the static files to GitHub, how would you get to retrieve the... Sorry? If you would, didn't want to upload the, the website on GitHub and on a specific platform you, you own, for example, how would you go about getting the final files and not just the templated okay. ones? So, uh, when every time you uh, change something on, on Jekyll, it will, it will generate the, the static files, and then it will create a folder uh, called underscore website, okay? So this is the, ge the generated folder. You can copy this folder to any host uh, you want. It's that, just it, okay? Thanks for the demo, it was really interesting. Okay. Um, I didn't get the difference between the collections folder and the data folder. Oh, okay. So, um, the collections folder, you can create new items, and you, uh, each item can have their own slug, and 
the data folder is something that uh, you edit only once, uh, and it, it won't it won't be it, it won't generate any new page from it. It's just something that you store information, and it, it will be uh, exposed to the templates. Um, for instance, the uh, I will show you this. So something.json. You, you could use this for settings on your website or something. Uh, and then if I go to, for example, the footer and do something uh, like this here. I'm gonna just delete this and do this. So you got one, two, three. Yeah. You can do. You, you can have your own data structure in there. It can be a, a, a full-on JSON. It can be a CSV file. Uh, whatever you just have to uh, specify the, uh, the the file extension, and it will recognize some of those uh, some of those formats, and will, it will build the the object for you, and it ex it's exposed to the, the the templates. Okay. There's my. <laughs> Uh, so my question is regarding um, hosting. So uh, you've currently, uh, you've shown that it can be on GitHub and other uh, websites, correct? But it, it is highly dependent on the Netlify uh, platform, correct? This one, this, this example is. Okay, but is there any tool that is, um, I'm not saying free or open source, but at least uh, hostable? So. Uh, that I can host on my own servers using my own repos uh, and still make it public. Is that uh, available? Yes. Uh, Netlify CMS, for example, uh, is a, a, it's a separate project from Netlify uh, the service. So uh, the Netlify CMS is actually uh, open source. And then they have, if you want to do the, uh, the whole authentication uh, stuff uh, with your repositories, they, they have on, on their repository uh, several solutions for you to uh, implement uh, uh, all sorts of uh, authentication to the, to the back office, uh, JWT tokens and, and everything. Uh, so you, you can uh, use the, the, some open source tools that, that, that they have and implement that on your own. Okay. Yeah, so self-hosting. You can, do, you can okay. do it self host yes. I have uh, an extra question, sorry. Okay. Uh, and it is related to data storage. So uh, if I upload a video or an image, you said that it can be with third parties like YouTube or, or Vimeo, whatever. But um, you, uh, otherwise, it would be uploaded to the GitHub or, or the Git repository, right? Yes. But if that, you wouldn't that be uh, overkill? if, let's say, I change the video or something like that, because uh, without uh, Git uh, LFS, l large file system, it, it would scale up very, very. So what, some of these, some of these uh, also uh, provide that, like the, the, they said here, l large media, OK? Uh, Git LFS, like you said. Uh, but if you, if you want to handle uh, other kinds of media and have something more dedicated uh, to media storage uh, besides the media folder on your repository. Um, Netlify CMS, for example, I think, I, I believe others will, will integrate this as well. Uh, they have um, so already made some integrations with uh, third party media uh, like this. Caldinary, Upload Care, okay. so. This is, uh, uh, they have their own CDN, you can upload whatever you want. And then what, is hap what happens is if you integrate this with the, with the, back, with the back office, you'll, get, you'll probably get sent back uh, the uh, final URL that's going to be burned on your collection. And, then, and 
it's just like that. Then the, all the media is going to be handled by a third party. Okay. Uh, two questions. Um, how do you handle ordering in the collections? How do you specify if one item uh, shows up? Uh, uh, you can you can you can have something to to order if you have a, a specific uh, thing, but. Um, you, you, you can order by a specific field if you want, okay? okay? Because uh, the, the collections can be uh, quer queried, okay? Uh, but it's uh, mostly uh, done by uh, the, the, the last edited element, uh, the added, so it's kind of chronological by default. By default. Yeah. And uh, one other question. Uh, can you handle uh, multi-language websites? Or yes. You can specify, yeah, oh, how do you do it? It's, it's, it's uh, you can, you can, uh, on a field by field basis or? You can, uh, uh, you can have several approaches uh, to that. Uh, uh, Jekyll, uh, for example, has some plugins uh, for that. But yes, I, th I, I think uh, in the, the Netlify CMS, I haven't tried it for internationalization, but I think you probably have to do uh, more than one field. I, I don't know, I, ha I haven't asked, but I know it supports it. Okay, Thank you. but for Jekyll itself, you, you can have um, uh, plugins to do internationalization. So it, they will uh, steadily generate all the different pages for you. Uh, I have already actually, actually done that with other plugin. <laughs> um, and what happens is that all the, the uh, in the, the, the head section of uh, the, the page, you will have the, 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 the rel uh, for all the other languages automatically built for the, the, the different versions of the, the, the website. So, thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, GitHub has a, a relatively low um, throughput um, available for in, in, in their server, for the GitHub pages service. Mm -hmm. Do you have any solution for a, a large volume uh, website? Or, uh, or do you think that a CDN such as Cloudflare or uh, Bunny CDN could you absorb can, most, most of you the can, you can have uh, You can have Cloudflare in front of everything, of course. Uh, Netlify, for example, uh, as it has, they have the, their own C uh, CDN and uh, all, all their own servers. If you allow them to go fetch the, the code from your repository, they will serve it on their own C uh, CDN. And they also have a more relaxed limits for the number of uh, deploys per hour and everything. So that's one way. Or you could go full self-hosting if you want. Okay. It's done? Okay, thank you.